Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted and grateful to you all for having accepted our invitation and for being with us for this book release function on a day that holds significance for another reason. It is a birthday of the Honorable President. And ladies and gentlemen, let us wish him a very happy birthday. And many returns of the day by putting our hands together. Thank you all. We will now begin the proceedings of the evening by welcoming to our midst the Honorable President, the Honorable Vice President, and the Honorable Prime Minister by presenting them a bouquet each. I now request Ms. Shamima Siddiqui, Deputy Press Secretary, to the President to do the honors first and present a bouquet to the Honorable President. Thank you, Ms. Siddiqui. I now request Ms. Anita Bimel, Additional Comptroller of President's Household, to present the bouquet and welcome the Honorable Vice President. Thank you, Ms. Bimal. I now request Ms. Anjali Bakshi, Officer on Special Duty President Secretariat, to welcome the Honorable Prime Minister to our midst by presenting him a bouquet. Thank you, Ms. Bakshi. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to request Shimadi Omita Paul, Secretary to the Honorable President, to welcome this August gathering and conduct the proceedings for the release of the book. Srimadi Omita Paul. Honorable President, sir, Honorable Vice President, Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. A very good evening and a warm welcome to all of you to this book release function. For us, today is a very special day, and let me begin by extending my best wishes to the President Mukherjee on his 82nd birthday. I, on behalf of all present and on my own behalf, wish our 81-year young President a lifetime of happiness, good health, and many, many more years in the service of the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Rashpati Bhavan is over 85 years old in terms of its occupancy. As the Viceroy's house first, it was the seat of colonial power. After independence, it underwent a transformation as it became the office come residence of successive Indian presidents in its atmosphere, appearance, and character, it gradually came to symbolize the Indian nation and her democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, books have carried information and knowledge through ages. While in the past, a few books have been written about Rashpati Bhavan, a comprehensive research-based series covering every facet of this living heritage was waiting to be penned. The, this, the exercise to fill this gap was initiated at the very beginning of the 13th presidency. This 13 volume project beginning, uh, which reaches its culmination today is based on painstaking research and careful documentation. These books authored by renowned experts provide an authentic account of the subjects they deal with. 10 out of the 13 books in the Rashtrapati Bhavan series have been released during the last three years. Today, we are gathered here for the release of the remaining three volumes. I'm grateful to the Honorable President, Honorable Vice President, and Honorable Prime Minister for their gracious presence on the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the completion of the fourth hall, fourth year of this presidency on 25th July, a world-class museum was inaugurated. Five books and three folios were released, and initiatives for making Rashpati Bhavan a tourist hotspot in Delhi was launched. 
I'm happy to announce that after the museum was opened for public viewing in October, over 7,600 people have already visited the museum. A few other initiatives that have been completed since we mes met in July 2016 include completion of the retrofitting of Rashtrapati Ashiana at Dehradun, one of the presidential retreats, which, is, which was in complete disuse. It was inaugurated by the Honorable President in September this year, when he spent a weekend there. This has completed the exercise we undertook to restore the three presidential retreats, the other two being at Shimla and Sikandrabad. A twin tower residential complex comprising 72 modern apartments whose construction started only 14 months ago was inaugurated by the president this morning. A permanent exhibition of vintage carpets and tapestries of Rashpati Bhavan in the marble hall was inaugurated by the president this afternoon. As someone who has promoted an innovation culture, President Mukherjee today also inaugurated Navachara II, a gallery given shape by the National Innovation Foundation for permanent exhibition of innovative ideas. President Mukherjee has continued his engagement with the central institutions of higher learning as their visitor. He hosted the heads of 126 central institutions in the second visitors conference held last month. Rashpati Bhavan has been the platform for various international conferences in the past. Yesterday, the first ever laureates and leaders for children summit organized by the Kailash Satyarthi Children's Foundation began. It concluded today with the president flagging off the 100 million for 100 million campaign, which is aimed at mobilizing 100 million youth for shaping a better future for 100 million underprivileged children. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take a moment here to mention about the progress of the Smart Gram project, which was launched by the president on 2nd of Ju July this year. Through this key initiative, we wanted to replicate our experience of turning Rashpati Bhavan into a smart township in five selected villages in the adjoining districts of Haryana. For us, a smart gram is a humane, high-tech, and happy village which ensures an enhanced quality of life that contributes to the harmony, happiness, and well-being of all the villagers through the use of technology, especially information technology. We have followed a mo model based on the convergence of resources. In the first phase of this project, we are fo focusing on providing portable water, regular electricity, sustainable mobility, digital connectivity, sanitation and solid waste management, integrated healthcare at affordable prices, and enhancement in the quality of education and skill development. We are also creating a livelihood uh, generating opportunity by setting up village economic zones, VEZs. Within five minutes, Within five months of its launch, we have set up common service centers, which are providing a host of services on a digital platform in these villages. In collaboration with NSDC, we are now working on training all villagers through these CSCs in the use of mobile and Aadhaar-based cashless transaction platforms. We have set a target of one month for covering every villager in these five villages. If this experiment succeeds, then over 1.5 lakh live CSCs in villages all over the country can be effectively mobilized to take digital literacy to the doorstep of the villages. Smart gram training centers have been set up in all the villages, and over 300 boys and girls are undergoing skill in seven, seven water ATMs, e-doctor clinics, and smart ground wellness centers providing integrated health service based on traditional medicine have become operational. 
Udyog Kunj in Alipur has been developed as a village economic zone and more than 20 organizations have come together to form Smart Gram Consortium. The, the synergy of these organizations is rapidly transforming these villages. With these words, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all once again to this evening's program. And now we move over to the release of three books in the RB series. I would like to begin by expressing my deep gratitude to our, all our partners in this effort, IGNCA, Ministry of Culture, our prime collaborators in this project, Publications Division, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, our reliable publishers, and Sahapedia, who executed the project diligently. My thanks are also due to the authors, editors, photographers, and researchers who did meticulous work, the designers and printers who were thorough in their job, and all others associated with the project. My special thanks to the RB resource persons for these 13 volumes, Dr. Thomas Matthew, Shri Venu Rajamani, Gayatri Isar Kumar, Major General Anil Khosla, Shri Siddharth Sharma, Captain Prashant Singh, Shamima Siddiqui, Shakil Alam, and Yudi Kukreti. I first, I will now first like to invite the Honorable Prime Minister to release the book Rashtrapati Bhavan from Raj to Suraj, which is the second volume of the children's book and present its first copy to the Honorable President. I call upon Shri Ajay Mittal, Secretary, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, to please come up on the stage and facilitate. Thank you. I now invite the Honorable Vice President to release the book Indra Dhanush Volume 2, which captures the music, dance, theater, and cinematic events organized at Rashpati Bhavan in the last two years and present its first copy to the Honorable President. I request Shri Siddharth Sharma, uh, Internal Financial Advisor, President Secretariat, to kindly come up and facilitate. Thank you, Siddharth. I now request the Honorable President to release the book, Life at Rashpati Bhavan, which depicts the human history of the residents living in the Rashpati Bhavan estate. Shri Shakil Alam, OSD to the President, may please come up on the stage and facilitate. Thank you. It's now my privilege to invite the Honorable Prime Minister to address this August gathering. A 
आदरणीय राष्ट्रपति जी आदरणीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी श्रीमती अमिता जी डॉक्टर थॉमस मैथ्यू उपस्थित सभी वरिष्ठ महानुभाव मैं सबसे पहले आदरणीय प्रणवदा को उनके जन्मदिन पर आदरपूर्वक प्रणाम करता हूं और उन्हें बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं सार्वजनिक जीवन में अनेक लोगों के साथ कार्य करने का मुझे सौभाग्य मिला है दिल्ली मेरे लिए नया था जब प्रधानमंत्री बना यहाँ की दुनिया नई थी जो सुनता था वही समझता था ऐसा नहीं था उस समय राष्ट्रपति जी ने पद की मर्यादाओं के बाहर उंगली पकड़ करके मुझे चलाया महत्वपूर्ण विषयों पर मेरा मार्गदर्शन किया और प्रारंभिक उस दिनों में एक आत्मविश्वास देश की समस्याओं को समझने का एक दृष्टिकोण और वो ऐसे बताते थे जैसे सुनने वाला सब कुछ जानता है ये कभी महसूस नहीं होने दिया कि भाई तुझे कुछ मालूम नहीं है मैं तुम्हें बता रहा हूं कभी नहीं महसूस होने दिया यानी अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ी विशेषता थी कि जो जिसका मुझे बड़ा लाभ मिला उनके विशेषताओं का गुणों का जितना वर्णन करो उतना कम है लेकिन मेरा सौभाग्य है कि मुझे उनके साथ कार्य करने का अवसर मिला है बहुत कुछ जानने का समझने का सीखने का सौभाग्य मिला है आज उनके जन्मदिन पर ईश्वर से यही प्रार्थना करेंगे कि लंबे कालखंड तक आपका मार्गदर्शन मिलता रहे आपके अनुभव का लाभ देश और दुनिया को मिलता रहे आज यहां तीन ग्रंथों का लोकार्पण हो रहा है राष्ट्रपति भवन में ये एक ऐसी गतिविधि जो लंबे अरसे तक आने वाली पीढ़ियों को भी काम आने वाली है हम लोग हर बार सुनते हैं कि दीवारों को भी कान होते हैं ये हम सुनते आए हैं लेकिन जब राज से स्वराज इस ग्रंथ को देखते हैं तो सचमुच में महसूस होता है कि इस परिसर के हर पत्थर में हर पेड़ में हर पौधे में पूरे परिसर में एक इतिहास संजोया हुआ है ऐतिहासिक इमारत के हर पत्थर के गर्भ में इतिहास पनपता है और इस ग्रंथ के माध्यम से इतिहास की उस गाथाओं को संग्रहित करने का प्रयास किया गया है 
जो पेड़ पौधे पत्थर से जुड़ी हुई है जिस इरादे से बना हुआ भवन जनशक्ति के सामर्थ्य से कैसा रूप बदल देता है राष्ट्रपति भवन जन सामान्य की आशा आकांक्षाओं का भवन कैसे बन जाता है ये उससे हम अनुभव कर सकते हैं यह दो ग्रंथ और भी लोकार्पण हुआ है इंद्रधनुष राष्ट्रपति भवन में जो कला संस्कृति को प्रोत्साहन दिया जाता है उसको संग्रहित करने का एक प्रयास है कला कभी भी राज्य आश्रित नहीं होनी चाहिए लेकिन कला हमेशा राज्य पुरस्कृत होनी चाहिए और मैं राष्ट्रपति जी का आभारी हूं कि भारत के भिन्न भिन्न कोने की इस कला संस्कृति परंपरा को पुरस्कृत करने का एक निरंतर प्रयास यहां हुआ है और जब एक कला या कलाकार उसकी कलाकृति उसको इतने बड़े आशीर्वाद मिल जाए तो वो अपने आप में वैश्विक रूप धारण कर लेती है दुनिया में संगीत जीव मात्र के जीवन का हिस्सा है जीव मात्र कह रहा हूं मैं मनुष्य नहीं कह रहा हूं जीव मात्र के जीवन में कला संस्कृति संगीत का अपना एक प्रभाव है लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि भारत की दुनिया को एक बहुत बड़ी देन है तन को डुलाने वाले संगीत की कमी नहीं है लेकिन मन को डुलाने वाला संगीत इस धरती की देन है जो मन को डुलाता है और वैसा इंद्रधनुष की इस रचनाओं में ये प्रतिबिंबित होता है राष्ट्रपति भवन इस तरफ ई चुने पत्थर से बना हुआ नहीं है यहां पर रहने वाला हर व्यक्ति अपनी जिम्मेवारियों को निभाते हुए राष्ट्र के गौरव की चिंता करता है वो एक गुलदस्ता भी तैयार करता है तो उसके दिमाग में रहता है कि मेरा ये गुलदस्ता जिसके हाथ में जाएगा मेरे देश की पहचान लेकर के जाएगा मेहमानों को कोई खाना खिलाता होगा तो उसको ये नहीं लगता है कि चलो आज शाम को वो भूखा न चला जाए उसके मन में रहता है कि मैं वो खाना बनाऊं ताकि मेरे देश की कोई याद लेकर के कोई जाए ये काम इस राष्ट्रपति भवन के परिसर में हर छोटे मोटे व्यक्ति के द्वारा होता है वो क्या करते हैं कैसे करते हैं यहां की जिंदगी कैसी है यहां के श्वास उच्छ्वास में किस प्रकार की धड़कन है उसकी अनुभूति उस ग्रंथ में संग्रहित करने का प्रयास किया गया है और इसलिए जीवन से लेकर के पत्थरों में पले हुई जिंदगी तक को जानने का प्रयास इन तीन ग्रंथों के द्वारा हुआ है मैं इस प्रयास के लिए राष्ट्रपति भवन की सारी टीम को हृदय से बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं आदरणीय राष्ट्रपति जी को फिर से एक बार प्रणाम करता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद respected rashtrapati ji honorable pradhan mantri ji distinguished guests and friends earlier in the day i had occasion to felicitate rashtrapati ji on this very very happy occasion and to wish him a long and happy life in the dhanush in a sense is an innovation in another sense it is an upgradation of what has been happening 
in Rashpati Bhavan over decades. But the difference is that the cultural events were usually part of a state occasion, often visits of uh, visiting dignitaries. But this program, Indra Dhanush, has given it a different perspective altogether. To make available some of the best products of Indian culture, to a wider audience. Select, but wider nevertheless. Promotion of culture, as this audience knows very well, is one of our constitutional duties. Article 15A is very specific on the protection and promotion of the composite culture of India. But not everyone would know that it is also part of our international obligations. UNESCO's NARA Declaration of 1994 and the Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity of 2001, they are, we are parties to both. And therefore, we accept it as an obligation emanating out of our own cultural duties, but of our international obligations also. And there is a very good reason for it. In terms of economics, we talk about globalization. Globalization is a fact of life. And yet, globalization cannot have an economic dimension only. It has to have a much wider di dimension so that the people of the world who are perforce put together, live together, work together, understand the complexity and diversity, the richness of each other's cultures. All cultures, near or far, deserve equal respect and promotion to the best of one's abilities. So this is a very happy new exercise that has been undertaken in Rashpati Bhavan in the past four days. And uh, this is something which is greatly to be welcomed. Once again, Rashpati ji, I felicitate you on this occasion and thank you for inviting me. Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, sir. May I now request the Honorable President to say a few words. Good evening. Sri Muhammad Hamid Ansari. Vice President of India, Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, Honorable Speaker, Sri Muthi Sumitra Mahajan, former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, distinguished ministers, judges of the Supreme Court, governors, Lieutenant Governors, Senior officials of Rashtrapati Bhavan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the very outset, I would like to express my deep gratitude and appreciation, starting from Vice President, Prime Minister, former Prime Ministers, and many others distinguished friends who are present here, I have been overwhelmed by their good wishes, blessings, and expression of their love and affection to me. I have noticed 
and I consider myself to be fortunate enough. Perhaps it is the blessings of God that I have received so much from my friends, from the people. I do not know what I have done. But this much I know, surely, I am, my contribution is no match to what they have done to me, they have contributed to me. I sincerely thank you for this abundant blessings, goodwill for me. Secretary to the President, Mr. Swamita Paul has described in details what we have attempted to do since my assumption of the office of the 13th President of the Republic of India. To be very candid, I spent most of my life within stone's throw from President's house, but till before 25th July 2012, I did not have much knowledge about the life and how the people who live in this estate, what they do, what is the responsibility. Constitutional responsibility, of course, I knew. I was not unknown to the President's house because as finance ministers, every year on the day of presentation of my budget, I had to come to the President to obtain his approval <laughs> under Article 17, Clause 1, before I presented the budget to the Parliament. Umpteen number of banquets hosted by Prime Ministers, I have come, and perhaps six or seven times, I had to come to the Ashoka Hall to be shown in as ministers to the Government of India, but except that nothing. Therefore, my first objective was, and where I was ably assisted by my team, headed by Amita, Secretary to the President, to achieve that objective, <coughs> demystify the life and events in Rashtrapati Bhavan, open it as far as possible. And I am happy to inform a large number of visitors have visited Rashtrapati Bhavan in the contemporary years. We have facilitated through the electronic systems. We have started sending invitation through electronic method and receiving response. And as it has been stated in details, we have been able to build up a smart locality within the President's estates where a large number of people, which I did not know earlier, about seven to 10,000 persons live here. And for Rashtrapati Bhavan staff, just in the morning today, I opened Twin Towers, two multi floored flats to provide the accommodation to the grade three and grade four employees of Rashtrapati Bhavo. As we had a piece of land just behind the Ramon Lohia Hospital. Cultural aspects have been described Prime Minister very eloquently, very adequately. And these are the treasures we have, we possess. And I have tried through the Indra Dhanush program to project the various aspects of our culture. And I'm happy to have received the overwhelming response from classical artists of high reputation coming here and making their performance 
and we have tried to find out the heritage which we have inherited through our culture, which is living, thriving, being multidimensional. Similarly, various aspects of Rashtrapati Bhavan, I thought that we should document it with the help of professionals and experts, which we have been able to do. And for the future, researchers and interested persons, this will provide the key to where to start and where to find out what we want to have. The rich resources are available here, including the library and various aspects. And the museum which has been developed with the help of an expert of the contemporary India who has built up our parliamentary museum and it will no doubt attract a large number of visitors. I would not like to prolong my observations. I wanted only to express my deep gratitude to all of you who have assembled this evening here and many of others who came from the morning to see me, to wish me. Thank you all. Thank you indeed. Jai Hind. Thank you, Honorable President, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the last event of the evening, the vote of thanks, which I would now propose with your permission. Honorable President, sir, Honorable Vice President, sir, Honorable Prime Minister, sir, Honorable Speaker Lok Sabha, Honorable former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Honorable Union Ministers, Honorable Governors, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin my task by thanking our Honorable President. The idea to record for posterity the cultural, historical, and architectural facets of Rashtrapati Bhavan was none other than that of our Honorable President. The idea was incubated when he assume charge in 2012, and after that it has been an unrelenting effort. Including the three books released today, it has culminated in the publication of 16 volumes in the less than four, hundred, uh, four and a half years of this presidency, covering such eclectic subjects as the avian life in the president's secretariat to the paintings that adorn the office and abode of the first citizen of the country. Without this unique initiative of the Honorable President, many of the myriad dimensions of Rashtrapati Bhavan would have been buried in the files and in the storerooms and many lost to history because of vagaries of time. On behalf of all those who are, are present here, and my own behalf, Honorable President, sir, please accept our heartfelt gratitude for being the inspiration behind this publication and for releasing the volume, Life at Rashtrapati Bhavan, and, uh, and above all, for being with us, especially on your birthday. Honorable Vice President, sir, you have been gracious enough to attend almost all the book release functions at Rashtrapati Bhavan and you have released six books, including the one which you released today. Please accept our heartfelt gratitude for your gracious presence, your words of encouragement, and for releasing Indra Dhanush Volume 2. Honorable Prime Minister, sir, none would disagree with me when I say that it would be an understatement that your presence invariably 
enthuses and your words inspire. You have not lost an opportunity to encourage us. You have virtually wrenched time from your hectic schedule and been with us on almost all the book release functions. We were energized by electrifying presence on these occasions, and it strove us to match and commit ourselves to the excellence which you embody. Today, you released our children's book, Rashtrapati Bhavan, from Raj to Suraj, and with it, you have graciously released a record seven books, and we are indebted and grateful to you for it. On behalf of all those who are present here, and on my own behalf, we extend to you, Honorable Prime Minister, sir, our heartfelt gratitude. We are fully conscious of the presence of a galaxy of distinguished guests over here. We have the Honorable Speaker of Lok Sabha. We have the Honorable former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. We have honorable our union ministers. We have honorable governors. We have honorable judges of the Supreme Court and many distinguished invitees who are here with us. Due to paucity of time, I apologize that I would not be able to thank you individually. Nevertheless, I leave you with the thought that your presence is always celebrated by Rashtrapati Bhavan. Let me also avail of this occasion to thank Shrimadi Amita Paul, Secretary to the Honorable President, for, be, for being, shall I say, the whip-cracking benign taskmaster who has ensured that the vision of the Honorable President is implemented most diligently and according to a time schedule almost impossible to succeed. Thank you, Madam. Our thanks are also due to our collaborators, uh, IGNCA of the Ministry of Culture, uh, the Publications Division of the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, and Sahapedia for having brilliantly executed a project according to exacting standards and a timeline, which in paradoxical terms has earned the Rashtri Bhavan the notoriety for trying to fulfill almost impossible and punishing schedules. Our thanks are also due to the print uh, and the electronic media present in large numbers. Thank you all for being with us. I'll be failing in my duty if I do not thank the officers and staff of Rashtrapati Bhavan for working hard for the completion of these volumes and for making this function happen. We thank you all. Let me now conclude by thanking you all for your gracious presence. We are grateful to you all for accepting our invitation and for being with us this evening. Jai Hind. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly rise for the national anthem. After the national anthem is over, you may kindly, kindly under the Honorable President, Honorable Vice President, and the Honorable Prime Minister leave the hall. The national anthem. Gentlemen, you are once again cordially invited to join us at the ceremonial hall for the dinner hosted by the Honorable President.